Welcome back to Sophie and Sebastian. In this episode, it's Christmas time. So snuggle up and get comfortable because we have a long and wonderful story for you. This story is called Everyone Loves Christmas. A few days before Christmas, it started snowing and the whole world turned white. The snowflakes were thick and fluffy and slowly covered the roofs and branches, lawns and sidewalks, until all the sharp edges had disappeared. It was as if someone had taken a coloring page and erased the lines until the neighborhood was just a white sheet with a few smudges of gray. All the kids wanted to go outside to play. Snow pants went flying, toques and mittens were fought over, and no one remembered to go to the bathroom first. When Sophie, Sebastian, Lucas, and Tessa finally went outside, they walked into a winter wonderland. Not a sound could be heard. The sky was full of glittering snowflakes, and the cold air made your cheeks tingle. It was so still you felt you were floating among the stars. Under the elm trees by the road, a wise old hare looked up and scampered off. Tessa showed everyone how to make a snow angel. You lie on your back and you move your arms and legs up and down. Then you stand up and where the snow is flattened, it looks just like an angel. Looks more like a drone to me, said Lucas. Or a butterfly, said Sophie. But angels do kind of look like butterflies. How do you know, asked Lucas. Have you ever seen one? Of course I've seen a butterfly before, said Sophie. And it looked just like an angel. Hey, said Tessa. Let's not argue. Let's make snowmen. And so they made snowmen. And Sophie showed Sebastian how to do it. First, she said, you make a tiny snowball like this. And then you roll it through the snow, nice and gently, so it doesn't crumble. Before you know it, your ball will be so big that you can hardly push it anymore. Anyone can do it. There was so much snow that the kids made a whole snowman family. They added carrots for noses and buttons for eyes and mouths. They put Dad's toque on the biggest snowman, along with a pair of sunglasses. For Mum, they added a scarf. Then each of the kids decorated their own snowman. Tessa's snowman had sticks for arms, and Lucas's was upside down and standing on its head. Sophie added a coat to her snowman to keep him warm, she said and Sebastian gave his snowman a gun to keep away the robbers. When they were all done, they lay down in the snow, admiring their work. A few flakes were still falling. It was starting to get dark, and up and down the street the Christmas lights were going on. Arches of color lined the garden paths, and white icicles sparkled from the eaves troughs. In the windows, stars and candles glimmered gently. Next door in Bert and Fran's garden, two little fawns were glowing brightly. Suddenly, Sebastian's eyes lit up. What if, he said, we make another snowman? Then Santa Claus will have to bring us more presents. Wouldn't that be funny? Everyone laughed. What's even funnier, said Tessa, is that everyone will think that Mum is going to have a baby. That's awesome, said Lucas. Let's do it. So they made one more snowman, smaller than all the rest. There were no more carrots, so they used a pickle instead. For the mouth, they found an old soother. He's so cute, said Sophie. What shall we call him? How about Frosty, said Tessa. No, shouted Sebastian, we should call him everyone. Then when Santa comes, he will bring presents for everyone. Sebastian was so pleased with his idea that he fell over and rolled around in the snow, laughing. They all agreed that everyone was a good name. Then they had a snowball fight before Mum called them inside. 
Soon after, when Dad came home from work, he looked somewhat confused. What's with the snowman family outside? he asked. Do you guys know something I don't? Is Mum expecting a baby? And why a pickle? The kids all laughed, and Sebastian explained everything. That is everyone, he said, and Santa is going to bring him presents. Dad still looked confused. But Mum said, I'll explain later. Now let's eat supper. Later that night, Sophie and Sebastian each wrote a letter to Santa. Lucas and Tessa typed them up. Would you like to hear their letters? Yes? All right, then, here they are, though you must promise to keep them secret. This is what Sebastian wrote Hi, Santa. My name is Sebastian. And I like you. I wish Daddy had a big white beard. Then I would pull it. Please, please, please get me the biggest Lego set you can find. I'm sending you a quarter to help you buy it. I hope you are not poor. If you are, you just have to go to the bank. They have lots of money. Also, I now have a baby brother. His name is Everyone. Seriously. He has never had any presents and he would like some. He likes Lego too. I have to go to bed now. Bye bye, Sebastian. One more thing, I would also like a lightsaber so I can beat up Lucas. Thanks for that, said Lucas, as he finished typing. Meanwhile, this is what Sophie wrote Dear Santa, I know you are not real. You are not kidding anyone. Everyone knows you are actually Dad. But please don't tell Dad that we know. He likes to pretend and dress up and be fat. I would like some clothes for my doll and lots of craft supplies. I promise I'll clean up the mess this time. Also, please get something for our little brother, everyone. He was just born and he's so cute. The good news is that he likes the same sorts of things we do. Say hi to Rudolph and Mrs. Claus and all the elves. Have a jolly Christmas and a happy new year. Oh, and don't speed. Love, Sophie. When Sophie was done, she had a sudden thought. We have to help Mrs. Wilson, she said. She often has sore hands, and she has no one to write a letter to Santa. What if she has a lot of things to ask for? And she can only write a few of them down. Then she just has to prioritize, said Lucas. I don't know what that means, said Sophie, so I won't do it. But tomorrow I'm going to visit Mrs. Wilson and help her write a letter to Santa. Not that I believe in Santa, but somebody has to do it. Good idea, said Mum, who had been listening in. The next day, the snow was still falling. And for most of the day, Sophie forgot all about visiting Mrs. Wilson. The kids played on Bert and Fran's lawn, and where Bert had piled up the snow from the driveway, they built a humongous slide. At the bottom, they rolled together some gigantic snowballs and made an igloo. Bert came out for a while to help them with the roof. It was the best playhouse ever, for you could use the slide to get in. Sophie brought her favorite stuffy, Polly the polar bear, to come live in the igloo. Sebastian and Lucas made a big pile of snowballs to throw at Dad, but they ended up using them all against each other. It was late afternoon when Mum reminded Sophie that she was going to help Mrs. Wilson with her Christmas letter. I just talked to her, and she has hot chocolate ready for you guys. Does she have marshmallows? asked Sophie. I don't know, said Mum. You'll have to find out for yourselves. Then Sophie and Sebastian went to visit Mrs. Wilson. Lucas and Tessa said they were going skating at the outdoor rink. Soon after, Sophie and Sebastian were sitting in comfy chairs in Mrs. Wilson's living room. Mrs. Wilson didn't have marshmallows, but she did give them each a dollop of whipping cream on their hot chocolate. There is nothing more special than to spend an hour on a wintry afternoon with a good friend as you sip your hot drink and feel your rosy cheeks slowly warming up. 
Looks like you've all been having a wonderful time with all this snow, said Mrs. Wilson. Yes, said Sophie, and now we've come to help you write your letter to Santa. Oh, I don't know, said Mrs. Wilson. I'm much too old for that sort of thing. You're never too old to make a wish list, said Sophie. That's true, but old folks like me often don't wish for what may be, but for what may have been. Mrs. Wilson looked a bit sad. Sophie thought for a minute. That's confusing, she said, but you can't just think about what has already happened. I never think about that stuff. I only dream about the memories I'm still going to make. Sophie felt quite big giving such good advice. All right, then, said Mrs. Wilson. Let's write a letter to Santa. So they wrote a letter together, and even Sebastian helped out a little bit. Here is Mrs. Wilson's letter. Dear Santa, it's been a while, so I hope you still remember me. I have been very good this year. I didn't steal too many cookies, and I only peed in my underwear once. Though if I did something bad, it's possible I may have forgotten it. I hope that this year you will bring me some chocolates, and maybe a manicure, though Sebastian doesn't think I need one, since I'm not a man and I don't need a cure. But I am a little sore, so how about some medication? And, says Sophie, a vacation, because it rhymes. So there you go. But most of all, I would like to keep enjoying the company of my lovely neighbors. With lots of love, Mrs. Wilson. Mrs. Wilson put the letter in an envelope and asked Sophie and Sebastian to put it in the mail. But first, she said, let's light the candles in the window. This big candle holder is called a candelabrum. And see, it holds six candles. Mrs. Wilson helped Sophie and Sebastian light each candle. There's something so beautiful about a tiny flame flickering in the dark. Sophie and Sebastian could look at the candles for a long time, but Mrs. Wilson said, Look, your dad is home already. Outside it was nearly dark, and Sophie and Sebastian could see dad sitting in a chair by the window, lit up by the Christmas tree beside him. But what is that? said Mrs. Wilson. She pointed to something that was coming through Bert and Fran's garden gate. Sophie put her hand in front of her mouth. That looks like, she started. Hey, it's Santa, shouted Sebastian. And so it was. Santa Claus was walking in Bert and Fran's garden. Over his shoulder he had slung a large bag full of presents. He passed the two fawns glowing brightly. He climbed on the pile of snow and slid down the slide into the igloo. Then he came out again and looked in all directions. You could see his beard shine brightly in the lamplight. Behind Santa you could see Bert and Fran sitting in their living room. How do they not see him? said Sophie. Where is he going next? asked Sebastian. Santa turned to go to Sophie and Sebastian's house. But suddenly he stopped. He was looking at the snowman family. Sophie held her breath. She saw Santa take something out of his pocket. It must be a list, she whispered. Maybe it's a present list. Santa tugged at his beard and then put his finger in the air as if he had a good idea. Then he disappeared behind the house. Where did he go? asked Sophie. I bet he's climbing on the roof, said Sebastian. He can probably use the ladder that Dad left behind after he hung up the Christmas lights. They waited for what seemed like a long time. Finally, there was Santa on top of the roof. He looked around and then disappeared behind the chimney. Wow, said Sophie. I want to go home and tell Mum and Dad that we saw Santa. This is so awesome. Then she added, 
We can put your letter in the mail, Mrs. Wilson, but you may have to email it now that he is already here. I will do that, said Mrs. Wilson. Well, you better go home and share what you've just seen. Sophie and Sebastian never ran home so fast. They burst through the door, and Sophie said to Dad, Guess what? Dad looked up from his book. He said, I get to guess. Well, I'm going to guess that somewhere in India, there's a man whose nose looks like a pencil sharpener. No, said Sophie excitedly. That's not what I meant. There's something else. Guess what? Oh, I get to guess again? No, said Sophie. Well, fine. Go ahead and guess. Okay. I'm going to guess that there are nine million bicycles in Beijing. That's just a guess, though. Nope, that's not it. Sophie paused. She thought carefully about what to say next. What I wanted to say was that Santa Claus is real. We figured it out. We saw him outside on the roof. How do you know it wasn't me? asked Dad. Because you were sitting here the whole time. And it couldn't be Bert either because we saw him in his living room too. Well, I'm glad I don't have to be Santa, said Dad. Seems like a lot of work. But it does look like Santa has come by because I see a lot of presents under the Christmas tree. Sophie and Sebastian looked over at the Christmas tree. Dad was right. There were all kinds of packages under the tree. Sophie read the names on the packages. Sophie, Tessa, Tessa again? Oh, this one is for you, Sebastian. And this one, this one is for everyone. It worked, Sebastian. Your plan worked. There is a present for everyone. Then they just had to tell Mum too. Mum was in the kitchen. She was baking and her hands were full of flour. Her cheeks were rosy and Sebastian was so happy to see her that he had to give her a great big hug. Mum smelled so nice and fresh as if she had been playing in the snow. That night it was Christmas Eve and all the kids got to unwrap their presents. They each took turns finding a present for someone else and some of the presents even had poems written by Santa. I wish I had time to share some with you but I'm sure you're just dying to find out what was in the present for everyone. It was the last present left. The problem was that no one could open it. Is there anyone here named everyone? asked Dad. No? Well, then this present will just have to stay wrapped. Wait, said Lucas. Together we are everyone, so we can open the present together. Then Sophie said, but not everyone is here. We have to get all the neighbors, too. I'm sure they would want to help open everyone's present. Just then the doorbell rang. Mum opened the door, and there were Bert and Fran and Mrs. Wilson. Are we late? asked Fran. We've come to sing some carols and share goodies. You're just in time, said Mum. We were about to go looking for you. How was it out there? Brrr, said Mrs. Wilson. A cold coming we had of it, and such a long journey. Sebastian laughed. It's not long. You live just across the road. Well, we got lost a few times, said Mrs. Wilson. We even thought we were at the wrong house. There seems to be one snowman too many outside. Sebastian laughed again. That's everyone. But no one is allowed to open his present. Who is no one? asked Fran. No one is no one, explained Sophie. Then she thought that sounded funny, so she added, But now that you're all here, everyone can open the present together. Then they all sat down, and Mum started opening the present. But after Mum took the wrapping off, there was another box hidden inside. Uh-oh, said Tessa. I think it's one of these presents that takes forever to unwrap all the way. And so it was. This time, Dad took off the wrapping, 
only to discover another box inside. They went around and around, and everyone took turns unwrapping this strange present. Finally, only a tiny package was left, and when Sebastian opened it, he found only a Christmas card. On the front was a picture of a star shining over a little village. There were just a few words on the back. What does it say? asked everyone all at once. Mum read the words. It just says, Merry Christmas. And then there's this message. As I have loved you, so you also must love one another. That's all it says. How mysterious, said Mrs. Wilson. I love riddles. I think, said Sebastian, that Santa is just tricking us because we were tricking him. I think, said Tessa, that it's from the Bible and it's reminding us what Christmas is really about. And I think, said Sophie, that we should just do what it says and love each other, which is easy because we already do. Then they all had a wonderful time together, singing songs, eating snacks, and playing games. Finally, it was bedtime for everyone, but when Mrs. Wilson and Bert and Fran were leaving, Sophie suddenly remembered something. There was one more present to unwrap. Can you guess who it was for? I'll give you a hint. He lives inside an igloo. It was, of course, Polly the polar bear, and when Sophie went outside to say good night, she discovered that he had received a brand new sled for sliding home after a long day in the snow. Thanks for listening. If you've enjoyed this episode, please share with others and leave a comment or a review. Bye for now. Bye for now.